Hello, this is Mario from Odeon. In this video, we will showcase array sources. This type of source is available in Editions Auditorium and Combined and is especially useful for PA systems. Array sources are defined by specifying individual transducers with their separation distances and delays. Then, Odeon calculates the resultant directivity pattern. To start creating an array source, we go to the source receiver list, then click on this icon. Here, you enter the description, position, and orientation, similar to how you do it with point sources. Only, here you should keep in mind that the position and orientation will be for the mounting point, shown with a black cross. When we define individual transducers a bit later, their coordinates will be relative to the mounting point. That is, the mounting point will be at x equals 0, y equals 0, and z equals 0, within the array's own coordinate system. These transducer coordinate system options define in which end of the array the mounting point will be. Recalling that the z-coordinate is the vertical coordinate, relative hanging means that the mounting point z equals 0 will be at the top of the array, and transducers can only be defined at z equals 0 or negative z-coordinates. Relative standing means that the mounting point z equals 0 will be at the bottom of the array so transducers can only be defined at z equals 0 or positive set coordinates. If you select absolute, this will give you complete freedom in defining z coordinates. Ideally, you would already know what type of array you are using and would not require to come back and change this setting. Let's stay with the relative hanging option. For each unit, here you define the directivity, position, orientation, phase inversion, delay in milliseconds, overall gain, and gain in octave bands. Let's select a random loudspeaker directivity file here. Then, you can add a new unit at the end of the list with this icon or at the current position with this other icon. For now, it doesn't matter which of the two we press. For this second transducer, let's add a position of minus 0.2 meters in the z-axis. Then, when we add new transducers at the end of the list, Odeon will automatically add the specified interval. The list of transducers will always be sorted by descending height. So, if you enter a Z coordinate that's in between other Z positions, the transducer will be moved to the corresponding position in the list. You should be aware that if you selected relative standing, add transducer will add the new transducer at the top. If we click on the Near Field tab, we will see the Near Field Directivity pattern resulting from our defined transducers. Then, the next tab will show the Far Field Directivity balloon. Now, if we also add an interval of 0.2 milliseconds delay between the transducers, when we go back to the Near Field tab, we will see the new resulting directivity pattern.
Also, now it is interesting to see the directivity at different frequencies. You can change the octave band here. You should be aware that a narrow beam will only form between a lower limiting frequency and an upper limiting frequency. Below this range, the beam will widen and above this range, the beam will break into several beams, as seen here. In chapter 14 of our user manual, you can read about calculating these limiting frequencies. We also have examples showing the effects of changing the number of transducers, the octave band, and the delay interval. You can find the user manual on our website, Downloads, User Manual. If we go back to move the array's position and orientation, you can see that we move the whole array. Although this is not encouraged, you can go back and switch between relative hanging and relative standing. Here, clicking on relative standing will shift the transducers upwards so that the lowest transducer is at Z equals zero. Likewise, clicking back on relative hanging will shift the transducers downwards so that the highest transducer is at Z equals zero. Keep in mind that if you previously had selected absolute and then select either of the relative options, the Z coordinates will be shifted and you will lose your original Z coordinates. Here, you can offset the array relative to the mounting point by specific values in different directions. For a standing array, if we consider the mounting point as the floor position where the array is placed, then the Z offset would correspond to the height of the first transducer from the bottom. Notice here that the black cross representing the mounting point does not move. Here, we worked with a line array, but using the X and Y coordinates, you can also define other types of arrays, like this quadrupole. To properly visualize this source's directivity pattern, we will need to select a horizontal cross-section. Finally, if you have defined a receiver grid, you can also see the 3D direct sound. You can learn about receiver grids and 3D direct sound in our video on defining and using color grids. With that, we conclude this tutorial, and we hope you have found it useful. Good luck!